evening and welcome once again to Neutrino Day, A Matter Mystery. My name is Constance Walter. I'm the Communications Director at the Sanford Underground Research Facility, and I'm really excited about tonight's program. Gina Gibson is Professor of Digital Communications at Black Hill State University in Spearfish, South Dakota. Beginning last summer in 2019, Gina, a multimedia artist, became the first ever surf resident artist in residence. As such, she combines sculpture, drawing, printmaking, digital design, and other media to create unique bodies of work. Through numerous visits over the past year to SURF's surface and underground laboratory facilities, Gina collected items of interest, using them to create several multimedia pieces. Tonight, she will tell us a little bit about her experiences as the first ever artist in residence, share some artwork with us, and give us some insight into her process. Welcome, Thank Gina. Thank you, Connie. Thank you. Hi. Um, I appreciate everybody that is watching, and uh, I really appreciate the lab for, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it's, it's kind of like a necessity for me to have an assignment. My students know this. And I gave myself the biggest assignment I've ever given myself. Uh, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about what the last year has been like for me. Uh, as Constance said, I'm a professor at Black Hill State University. I am also an artist and a graphic designer. I have hobbies such as collecting objects, which has played really well in the last year, um, and items and ideas. I also am um, a, an enthusiast for karaoke, which turned out very well in Leeds, South Dakota, because scientists and engineers on Friday nights happen to sing karaoke, which has become very helpful. Uh, in getting to have conversations about physics and um, the space here that were a little more casual and, and in between songs. Uh, I am also an amateur cook, getting a little better, a dog mom, and some things are to be determined. And the reason I came to surf, well, the first time was actually in 2013. I was a part of a group project or an art exhibition where 20 South Dakotan artists were invited to create work. And the piece that I made was a challenge. I almost didn't do this. I almost said no to being invited for the show. Uh, that would have been a mistake because what I didn't realize was a seed was being planted. I was engaged. I was turned on by something um, that was outside of my field, but at the same time, I started to see some similarities between me and the physicists and others. Now, the artist in residence idea. It sounds like the lab had already had this idea as well. I got, had the idea that I would apply to CERN, Fermilab, all these other places. And then one evening it hit me, why doesn't SURF have an artist in residence program? And they were thinking about it as well. So, you know, met, like stars collided. And I had this amazing opportunity over the last year. I didn't get to live underground for a year, even though that would have been an interesting piece. Um, but why do this anyway? Why, why go out of your way to do a project that's going to be big, that's going to take time? I already told you I have other things I'm doing, especially learning how to cook and karaoke. The simplest answer I can give is that I'm curious. And I think that's the thing that all creatives and people in physics, mathematics, almost any field, we're, we are curious about how far we can go, what we can do. But in order to do this, I had to have training and education about a culture and a place. And those of you that came to the deep talk a few months ago to a packed room, uh, you'll, you'll recognize some of these things. I had to learn about PPE, which is a term that most of us are familiar with now. Uh, protective lenses, eye appointments, shoes, it was really stuff that was outside of the realm of my understanding. And then I quickly had to learn about it. I was given brass tags, which one hangs on the board and one is on my person when I'm underground. Um, I was always uh, led by a guide, so I should make that clear. There's lots of safety here. And I'm the type of person that has to also buy books and read about things. And I bought a lot of books. And I started off very simple. I started with the ABCs of particle physics and it went from there. I also found uh, graphic novels about scientists, so it was very engaging, learning about different things. I didn't read every book cover to cover, 
but I certainly used every one as a reference. The history of homestake was also of interest to me. Homestake existed for over 100 years, 125, and I also wanted to learn about the Native American connection to this place as well. And the Black Hills are sacred space, so that was very important for me to respectfully um, keep in, in the back of my mind the entire time I was working. So, the Sanford Lab. On its property, you'll see two things called head frames. They're very iconic. They're very recognizable. For years, I was hiking in nearby trails, and I'd look up and I'd see that, this strange building. I was like, what is that? And you'll see that that has a cable system that actually leads to what I would consider a very um, unusual elevator. So you're in what we call the cage, and you're going underground a mile. So it's a fascinating uh, experience just sitting in a cage. It's kind of dark, you get wet, you have uh, protective gear on. Um, it's a different kind of sound, but it's fascinating. And then the spaces when you're below ground, uh, the absence of light as an artist was really uh, kind of disconcerting, but at the same time very engaging, because when there was light, I was really tuned into it. You'll see these plates are holding, these plates and uh, bolts are holding the wall in place and a pretty nifty machine that presses those into place and that does appear in some artwork that I'll show you momentarily. My personal artwork in the past I've used symbols, ladders, hands, other items, and those things I kept noticing. So it's kind of like when you buy a car you notice everybody else who has the same car. Same thing as an artist. I was already engaged with a certain set of symbols. Ladders, chairs, circles. Circles were everywhere. Round spaces, things you can crawl through. This is a hole I crawled through. Copper. I knew that gold would be something I'd be interested in just because of the history with Homestake. I didn't expect to see so much copper and how gorgeous the copper was. And if you become friends with a physicist, they might give you a bucket of cable slices. Again, the copper and the round circular shapes were here. And I had to play with these. I actually was walking by the lab director the day I received these, uh, this bucket, and it, it was a kind of dirty white bucket, and I'm waving it saying, aren't they beautiful? And um, well, you'll see the results of that. Copper rings. I was loaned a, a bag of copper rings. I brought a flatbed scanner underground, um, and I just piled them up, and I made some pieces based on that as well. Reflections are of interest to me, and I was also looking at color. So these are used as inspiration, uh, both photographically and as a reference. Orange and blue, it was everywhere, and it was, the contrast was gorgeous. I did use that in several pieces as well. And those little blue booties, if, you, if you're on the website, you might find a piece made out of that. And bacteria. When COVID-19 started, I was a little concerned about having so much bacteria in my work. And I thought, well, I might have to do a separate lecture on you know, bacteria and viruses. But the funny part is about the bacteria is I met one of my colleagues underground who didn't know I was going to be here. And he said, Gina, is that you? And I said, yes. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I have bacteria in my bag. So I said, okay. I said, what does bacteria look like? So I had an afternoon of looking at bacteria. And that was actually really fun. And then ended up in a lot of the work. I also kept a sketchbook and a notebook of what I was doing, my ideas, um, and it felt really important as an artist to keep that record as well. And we'll talk about the website after we get a chance to walk around the room and see some of the artwork. So I think I'll start off with some old things. These are brake shoes. Now, you might not recognize brake shoes like this, but these were used during homestake. And I had a play day where I got to wander around and basically go through a junk pile at surf. And every time I gleefully picked up something and I said, oh, I'll clean that and I'll use it. And I didn't even clean everything. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to create shelves. I wanted some kind of shelving device that was made out of wood that came from here. You'll notice I use wood several times. It's all site specific. Um, the head frame, as I mentioned, it's a really important uh, framing device that I used. And what I did is I created several pieces where you'll see that as a, a recurring theme or motif. 
Now, this, mo this little donkey right here, I actually purchased him from a pizza place here in town. He was not gold at the time. And I said, oh, do you guys know the story? I thought it was a donkey, it may have been a horse, that was born underground and brought above ground and given a parade during homestake times. And I just thought, ah, oh, I have to figure out a way to put a golden donkey in a piece of artwork. So here it is. Um, you'll see the copper rings as well. Another piece where I created a shelving unit using the, the uh, brake shoes. And I wanted to capture some of the items that I had picked up that were specific to homestake and to surf itself. So we have this little level. I found several boxes of levels that were just sitting, waiting to be used. Uh, the copper here, the, this like fibery copper, it's as thin as hair. Um, it will cut you when you're using it. I learned to use protective gloves. I found that just gorgeous. And I've tried different pieces where I wrapped it around things. And I am continuing to make work for the physical show as well. And then this little ball that you see, that was used uh, to crush ore. So when we had uh, gold mining here, the ore would be crushed and by different methods, and that was a part of that. And I got that from the Black Hills Mining Museum, and they were very helpful in answering questions that I had. So some bacteria. Um, I saw a lot of different kinds of bacteria. You saw in the PowerPoint there were these little round shapes that almost look 3D. There were things that looked, you know, kind of like hair or spaghetti. Um, I also became interested in some of the uh, blueprints from Homestake. So this is a 1933 drawing. And then part of my personal symbol set that I've been using for years are arrows, arrows and hearts and things. So I thought this would be interesting. You've got this head frame, you've got this direct link, I call it the search for gold. And I know that dark matter is also, uh, dark matter neutrinos and the other things that physicists are searching for are just as valuable, if not more so. Okay, so I'm really kind of proud of this one, not kinda. Uh, this was a big step for me. So I worked with Simpsons Printing over the last year and they were remarkably patient with me as an artist. I just kept saying, wait, you can print on that? You can cut that out? How can we do it? Can we make it bigger? Uh, there were multiple versions of this and it kept growing. Um, those cable slices in that dirty bucket. So I did several pieces using the cable slices. Some looked like stained glass. I had all these versions of it and it just wasn't working for me. It didn't click. So if a piece doesn't click and maybe maybe whatever field you work in or whatever creative activity you do, you know when you just don't have it, well, it didn't have it until I put it inside the hand. And I think COVID-19 may have had an influence on why I wanted so desperately to make something that was talking about touch. I felt this absence. I feel like as humans, we haven't had the opportunity to, to reach out to each other quite in the same way. I miss that, um, that casual hug I'd have when I saw a friend. So the idea of touch really mattered to me. And I did wanna talk about like, dark matter and celestial bodies. And I felt like these were a good stand in for a visual symbol of that. Plus Simpsons helped me print it really big and it's on acrylic and I just think it's really fun. So I continued the process after I figured out I could print on acrylic. Um, I continued the process of trying things on acrylic and I also used metal, which I'll talk about. I wanted something dreamy that everybody might like that, was, that had been exposed to the Sanford lab. I know sometimes some of the work might be cerebral, but then I thought, you know, I just want something that's a dreamscape. This originally was two pieces. There was underground and above ground. Underground hasn't worked quite yet. So above the surface, I am using some of, uh, I should mention this, you'll see that I use different images overlapping each other. So I do want to make that clear that I'm using Hubble images in some of these as well, and they are cited on the website. Those rings. Okay, so copper rings on a flatbed scanner. I was hopeful that I'd get something I really enjoyed, but I wasn't positive I would. Um, I worked with Simpsons Printing again to figure out what material would work best. We tried things like printing on metal where there was no white behind it. We tried it with um, little miniature versions. So it was where you could see the light come through and it has a sheen and it really did capture the, the uh, copper the way I wanted it to. So the materials as well as the ideas. 
the head frame. So I had a great opportunity to have a piece of the cable that is used uh, to bring that elevator that I showed you underground. I was determined to use it in a piece. This is also one of the posts that would be used inside um, of the shaft that is the elevator system. So I really wanted to take authentic pieces that exist here and put them in the artwork because I think that'll matter to the people here and it also matters to me. And this is a giant version of that. So I was just trying to capture this juxtaposition of something that's seemingly small, large. So you remember that, uh, that machine that was pressing the bolts into the, uh, the walls underground? That's what this is. So you can't tell that's where I got the photo from, but I just kept manipulating it. And I was working with texture and overlapping things. And I was just curious about what I could do. And just like the hand, I ended up dropping images into other shapes because I thought, oh, this is a cool device, a framing device that I ended up using. This piece might stand out a little bit and might be closer uh, in aesthetics to the first two pieces I showed you. This is an image of Dr. Ray Davis. He is, one of the, he is the first physicist that worked here, but he was here during homestake time in the 1960s. So that's, another, that's a whole other lecture. But neutrinos, eventually that would help other people realize the space here is important for studying deep science. A mile underground, it's quiet. And that gives you a chance to actually see things. So imagine trying to drop a pin at a rock concert. I heard somebody mention it that way. I think it was the director of the lab. Well, you have to go underground and get away from the rock concert. So that's cosmic radiation that we're avoiding. And then these. I struggled with these. Um, there are pieces that you have a hard time with, and these were difficult. So this ended up multiple versions. And just like the other ones I showed you, it wasn't until I dropped them into the circular frames, it was an aha moment. I said, wait, what if I break it up? What if it's multiple pieces? What if that adds visual interest? And the circles that kept showing up everywhere just kind of jumped out. Um, so this is a Hubble image as well as some bacteria. And so the biggest things in the universe and the smallest things in the universe together, or some of the smallest together, and I find that interesting, the big with the little, the unseen with the hard to see. So that's uh, one of those pieces, more bacteria. As you can tell, I'm borrowing some bacteria. Um, and I wanted it to be kind of dreamy. This piece is actually uh, a little metal burst disc, and I scanned it on a flatbed scanner again. Uh, this is enlarged quite a bit, and I really wanted to play with that orange and that blue that I showed you from the, the uh, the, the video earlier, the PowerPoint earlier. So I got my color scheme from there. And I can take you over to the table if you'd like to see some of the flat, or some of the pieces here. Do you want to start with this one or do you want to go there? Let's, let's start with this one, some more bacteria. <laughs> This is another piece that was hard to do. I say that a lot because I want people to know that there's, there's a level of hard work. I fought with this, um, and it was an accident that made it work. So I was working with Simpsons Printing to print bacteria with a white background. So I didn't realize that I needed to print white, and they didn't do it that day, which worked out great, because I had one of those blueprints that I was able to put behind it. I literally woke up in the morning and said, oh, this will pull it together. This is another set of objects that I found while like, wandering around the premises with a guide. Uh, and I'm sure that when, he, when I picked up this old dirty thing, he was like, what are you doing? And then blocks of wood that I had cut to size as well, also from Surf. So my little miner, I could show you my little miner. Um, I kept thinking about um, the history of Homestake and what many people probably came here to do, which was find a better life, um, make a living. And then I think about the scientists and engineer engineers that are here now, and maybe this artist. Uh, we're all searching for something. So I just thought this was a nice, quiet little way of saying, this person's like 
mining for peace or searching for peace. So I thought, and these little doves have shown up in multiple pieces over the years as well. So that's a little bit from my personal set. Okay, so this pair, I have spray painted so many gold pans, gold. <laughs> um, I learned a lot about plastic and spray paint. And I also was trying to work with Simpsons Printing to figure out how to make an interior for these. So this is uh, um, an image of lead. And I wanted to pay respect somehow to just the physical presence of lead. You can see this area called the open cut, um, this aerial view from Google Images. And I felt like that anybody here would recognize that. And again, the framing device of a gold pan. And then this is a slice of, of core sample, but it's a, a plastic piece that I had printed. I was really intentional not to use any, any stone or rock from the site because of the connection of the Native Americans and the agreement that the lab has with them. And I felt like that respect needed to be paid. So that is the short version of what I've done over the last year. Yes, Erin? OK, sure. Sure. Somebody asked if I made the art wall underground. Uh, no, I made most of this art in my garage <laughs> um, and, in my, and in my second room in my house. Um, I collected images underground. I did collect, um, I did do some sketching, mostly above ground actually. I did most of the sketching after I got home and I was trying to process what I had seen underground. Uh, the first trips underground are rather disorientated. Like they, 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 were dis they were really odd. Like I was always hungry. Like it was just a, and some people probably nod, yes. Um, it's, it's strange because you go a mile underground, the absence of light, air feels different, sound is different. And then you're going in different spaces. So when I was around people, there was sort of an energy. And then I was able to come up and make the work with some clarity. So I think it would be an interesting idea to make work underground, but I think I'd want to make it for underground if I did that. So thank you. Any more questions? I can walk you through the website. Um, I think that you'll see on the website there are approximately 20 pieces. In this space there were 14. And so there are several pieces that I did not um, that I haven't made physically yet, and some of them probably will never be made physically. I thought of this as an opportunity to make two shows. The website acts as a separate show. I tried to uh, format the website where you walk through the gallery just like you would, I want to imagine you walking in a physical space. One piece leads to another. So, Erin, do you have the site up? So, thank you so much. Uh, so there's this intro page. So when you first type in Seeking the Unseen, you'll see that. If you go to the gallery, thank you, Erin. You'll see that um, if you hover over an image, it'll give you some information about that image. And I know I didn't go into great detail as I walked around the room. You'll see some of the pieces that we just looked at. And I know scale is very different there versus here. I found that sort of interesting, and I decided to work with it. And just just accept it as part of the medium. Uh, the, the creature piece, that is from those blue booties. I kind of wanted to tell everybody that secret. Um, so if you go through and you have questions about any of that work, please let me know. And then Erin, uh, if you wouldn't, oh, sure. <laughs> so I was interested in color. I was interested in texture. And as soon as it looked like some kind of creature or monster, I was like, yep, that's it, that's the piece. I played with bumping up all the contrast. Uh, my background is as a digital artist. I also do traditional printmaking in my history. So I think materials inspire me. I, I like to take almost anything and try to make stuff out of it. Uh, I'm definitely that person that would pick up a piece of junk and say, yes, I could totally do something with this. So thank you, Erin. And if anybody has any questions uh, about anything on the website, please let me know. There is a page that gives you more information about me and my email address is there if you'd like to contact me. And this is really important, uh, the acknowledgments page. I do want to make sure I say a thank you to several people and several people will be getting personal phone calls or, or messages. I have really appreciated this opportunity. 
it's, it's been especially important during COVID-19 to have a project that I was so in and so invested in and fell in love with that it was hard. To, I, every time I'd get worried, I'd think, well, I got the work to do. So it's been a wonderful, a wonderful way to, to dive into something. So I think artists, especially one like me, when you have a project, you're in love with the project. It's hard to walk away from it. That being said, I met people, and those people were remarkable along the way. I met people here at the Sanford Lab, which I really appreciate. I met more people at Black Hill State and knew them more deeply as a result of this project. Uh, spending time talking about bacteria with my colleagues is actually really fun. Um, I was supported by Black Hill State, and I appreciate that as well. And you'll see that the links, um, the, I, the um, logos on that page do have links, so you are able to go to those to the Sanford Lab, the BHSU uh, homepage, and more. I have appreciated getting to know Lead. Lead is a special town or city. I spent a, t a bit of time in the visitor center, and I also spent a, vis a bit of time in. Um, the mining museum, as I mentioned before. And everybody was really helpful, even though they kind of went, you're an artist? Um, but I certainly didn't feel that after the first few visits. They were just like, oh, you're an artist. Here, read this, do that. Here's a picture, try this. Have you heard of this? So that was wonderful. Um, and then at the bottom, I do pay respect to the Native community. Uh, the Black Hills have been special for me. I moved here in 2008 for the job at Black Hill State, and I thought I'd be here a year or two. And this place, it, it, it's remarkable. And I appreciate that um, I've had the opportunity to be here. So are there any other questions? We have a lot of questions. You have a lot of questions? Good. I could just keep thanking people, though. I'm happy to do that, too. Yeah, so I think that each of these kind of lead into the next Sure. Um, so one question we have from Doug is, what was the experience like having a show that's primarily digital into the gallery focus? What is the experience of having a, a show that is primarily digital instead of gallery focused? That was hard. Um, I look forward to a gallery exhibition. And at first I was, I was actually like, oh man, what am I gonna do? I mean, how do I make a show that people will be interested in that's online and later face to face? So I felt like at first, for a couple of days actually, I, I guess I would say I kind of had a mopey moment um, just sort of a, what am I going to do? And, and then it hit me. Here's an opportunity. Don't look at this as a setback. Look at this as an opportunity to reach a broader audience, uh, to make work you wouldn't have made otherwise, which I certainly made work I wouldn't have it, just for the physical show. I was, I was challenged. And I think ultimately that was good. Great. And now I am mic'd up, so you don't necessarily oh, have you, to Aaron. repeat after me. All right. We have a question from Becky. Have you ever made a picture of a neutrino? This is also from Becky and her son, Owen. Have I ever made a picture of a neutrino? I did not for this project. I do find that to be an interesting question, though, because I did think about how to represent neutrino oscillation, and I almost did a lot of drawings of ice cream flavors because I kept thinking about neutrinos as having different flavors, and I just kept going to ice cream. So I almost put ice cream in the work. So it was an almost neutrino. So. Great, and Margie asks, how has your work evolved since you arrived in the Black Hills up until now? Ah, how has my work evolved? Oh, um, moving here changed things. Uh, I started making work that related to nature. The Black Hills became a part of especially my last body of work, which isn't represented on the website yet, but will be. Um, I did pieces using bones and things out of the woods and um, it was it was unusual, and uh, my my home was full of things. And this project actually was a good next project. Um, it gave me an opportunity to quit digging up things, at least not that weren't here. Um, and that was a good thing. And it was a challenge because I had science to talk about and big ideas like where do we come from, um, instead of you know uh, the sort of the emotional stuff that I was working through as an individual, as an artist, this was uh, an intellectual pursuit that was really good for me. Great. Uh, Mary asks, how many times have you been underground? You know, I thought I should have counted that. Um, sure. Uh, I think about 10. I think about 10, somewhere around 10. Sure. And Patty asks, 
Is there a piece of artwork here that you're most proud of and why? I think the big hand. <laughs> so uh, the big hand, first of all, the scale of it and working with a print shop and uh, there's, like I said, multiple versions of this. Uh, we tried different techniques. We did, uh, I guess I could walk over to it, couldn't I? The big hand. Um, I think it was the one I was the most eager to see too in person. I knew we were trying to do it at four feet uh, because that was as wide as they could go without me making it separate pieces. Uh, and then I, I just couldn't wait to see it. And there were a few times where we had fumbles and I wasn't able to see it as quickly as we thought. Um, and I realized that I was eager for a piece. So that was really, uh, that was a big step. Sure. And uh, Michelle says, what's the most interesting thing you found on site? Ooh. It's not in the artwork. Um, I have a giant wrench in my house. And I don't mean like, I mean giant like, like feet. It's a giant wrench. One of the things that I really admire about Surf and both Homestake, uh, and not necessarily this wrench, they made things specific for the site. Uh, there's a level of creativity and ingenuity here. Um, it's like, this thing exists just for this one thing. It's like, well, somebody just made it. So that part, it was just sort of like, oh, look, there's brake shoes, there's this, there's that. Things are stamped. So there's a lot of interesting objects in that way. Sure, and I think we have one final question. Do you think the themes that you've discovered at SURF will carry through your work for a long time, or are you somewhat happy to be at the conclusion of sorts? I'm not done with this yet. Um, I'm still working on pieces for the physical show. And I, you know, in 2013, when this started with a one piece in a group exhibition, I couldn't shake it. So I don't know what kind of seeds have been planted. I, I just don't know where this will go. And that's kind of part of the fun too. Actually, we have two more. Sure. We have time. <laughs> Uh, and we're asking, what is one thing you've been most inspired by while being surf's artist in residence? The people. I mean, it's, I, I have been so touched over and over again by every person. Um, it, it's just remarkable how kind people are here. It's very family-like. Uh, coming back to the site in the last week or two was actually uh, kind of emotional. I was like, oh, I really miss this place. Uh, so that's, it's been the people. Great. And what have been some of the challenging, uh, challenges with printing? Oh, what have been the challenges with printing? Um, me, <laughs> I've been my own challenge. Um, Simpsons again, wonderful. I, I actually said, can I talk about them? Um, and if you guys are out there, thank you. Um, the challenges have been, I didn't know what could be done and I don't feel like I'm finished. I think that we just got something started that will probably be a thing that I'm doing for a while. I, I thought, for example, with this piece, it was way late in the game that I figured out I can overlap things. Why well, I didn't think of that earlier. Um, so this, I attached behind this. I, I think that there's a lot of potential for me layering things and the piece I showed you earlier with the bacteria where I put the, um, the blueprint there that was a challenge and then i thought oh i gotta do more of this so there's just so much potential printing on metal I, almost everything i have i have multiple versions of where we've tried it on metal we tried it on plaque or acrylic we tried it big we tried it little i have just actually i brought several things um bacteria of all all sorts <laughs> so terrific well that's all the questions that's that we all have. the questions well i really appreciate it so and if you have questions, you can email me, uh, gina.gibson at bhsu.edu.